Welcome back to our Together Apart series. I really hope that you enjoyed your Easter holidays and that you're enjoying being back at school and seeing all your friends. This session, I'd like you to think about the question, do you believe that things happen for a reason? Now, when thinking about this question, here are a few things that you can consider. Do good things happen for a reason? What about bad things? Do you believe there's a plan for your life? What about your friends' lives? Who do you think is in control of the plan? In this session, I've got a story for you now about a chef called Gordon Ramsay. You've maybe heard about him before or even seen him on some cooking shows. Gordon Ramsay dreamed of becoming a professional football player throughout his childhood. And when, during a match for his youth team, he was spotted by a Glasgow Rangers scout, it seemed all his dreams had come true. After completing trials, Rangers signed Gordon aged 15. For three years, he played for the youth team of a club who were consistently at the top of the Scottish Championship and one of the best teams in Europe for a young player to be learning his trade with. However, there was a problem. One of Gordon's knees was consistently giving him problems and he often missed matches through injury. Eventually, doctors told Gordon that his knee wasn't healing properly. His professional football career was over before it had really begun. Most people are planning their first career when they turn 18, but Gordon was already faced with the reality that he'd have to embark on a second. Devastated, he had to rethink his entire future. After careful thought, he began his second career as a chef, a decision that saw him leave his hometown in Scotland to study in London and Paris with some of the best chefs in the world. Thanks to his determination and hard work, Gordon is now a well-known celebrity chef with several TV programmes, as well as restaurants in London, Tokyo and New York. He still occasionally plays a game of football for charity, but it seems strange to think that, had it not been for a sad and heartbreaking problem, Gordon's true gifting might never have come to the surface. What do you think about the story then that we've just heard? Imagine you are in the position Gordon found himself in when he found out he'd never be able to play football again. How would you feel? Would you be able to pick yourself up like he did? Looking back now, do you think that Gordon would be able to see the bigger picture and not feel angry about having to give up football? What do you think Gordon learned about his first career as a footballer and from his injury? Do you think God has a plan for us? Does this include our careers? Is it important for you to think that God has your whole life planned out or just the bigger picture? Do you think it's important that he knows every single detail about what is going to happen, every choice and every decision, where you're gonna live, your schools, your careers, who you're gonna love, your friends? Or is it just the bigger picture about what you might impact on in the world? Think of a time when you've had to give up something you love doing, temporarily or permanently. Was it hard and why? I know when I've had to give up something for a short amount of time, I keep thinking I can get back to it at some point. I know it will happen. But when you have to give up something forever, it can make you sad. There will be a grieving process. Or maybe you're glad to have to give it up. Maybe it's not such a huge loss. Consider the last time you were angry. Were you angry at yourself, your family, friends, or even God? How did you recover and what did you learn? Anger can be such a hard emotion to work through. There can be pain associated with it because you've maybe been hurt by a situation or someone's decisions. Maybe you learned some valuable coping mechanisms to help you get through the anger or possibly you're still trying to understand the feelings. There are so many ways to help you overcome anger, from talking to friends and family to help you process, writing down your thoughts and feelings, or even physical exercise can help release the feelings. Learning can happen from everything you go through, good and bad. Maybe you realise that actually you didn't have a very healthy coping mechanism, Sometimes when we are hurt and in pain, we can unleash this against other people 
and cause them hurt. I'm now going to read from the Bible and today we're reading from the book of Job and we're reading chapter 1 verses 1 to 22. There was a man named Job who lived in the country of Uz. He was a good honest man. He respected God and refused to do evil. Job had seven sons and three daughters. He owned 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 1,000 oxen and 500 female donkeys. He had many servants and he was the richest man in the East. Job's sons took turns having dinner parties in their homes and they invited their sisters. The day after each of these parties, Job got up early in the morning, sent for his children and offered a burnt offering for each of them. He thought, maybe my children were careless and sinned against God at their party. Job always did this so that his children would be forgiven for their sins. Then the day came for the angels to meet with the Lord. Even Satan was there with them. The Lord said to Satan, where have you been? And Satan answered the Lord, I have been roaming around the earth, going from place to place. Then the Lord said to Satan, have you noticed my servant Job? There is no one on earth like him. He is a good, faithful man. He respects God and refuses to do evil. Satan answered the Lord, but Job has a good reason to respect you. You always protect him, his family and everything he has. You have blessed him and made him successful in everything he does. He is so wealthy that his herds and flocks are all over the country. But if you were to destroy everything he has, I promise you that he would curse you to your face. The Lord said to Satan, all right, do whatever you want with anything that he has, but don't hurt Job himself. Then Satan left the meeting. One day, Job's sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine at the oldest brother's house. A messenger came to Job and said, we were plowing the fields with the oxen and the donkeys were eating grass nearby when some Sabins attacked us and took your animals. They killed the other servants. I am the only one who escaped to come and tell you the news. That messenger was still speaking when another one came in and said, a bolt of lightning struck your sheep and servants and burned them up. I am the only one who escaped to come and tell you the news. That messenger was still speaking when another one came in and said, the Chaldeans sent out three raiding parties and attacked us and took the camels. They killed the other servants. I am the only one who escaped to come and tell you the news. That messenger was still speaking when another one came in and said, your sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine at the oldest brother's house. A strong wind suddenly came in from across the desert and blew the house down. It fell on your sons and daughters and they are all dead. I am the only one who escaped to come and tell you the news. When Job heard this, he got up, tore his clothes and shaved his head to show his sadness. Then he fell to the ground to bow down before God and said, when I was born into this world, I was naked and had nothing. When I die and leave this world, I will be naked and have nothing. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Praise the name of the Lord. Even after all this, Job did not sin. He did not accuse God of doing anything wrong. Despite terrible things happening to Job, he doesn't give up on God. Is this how Christians should act when bad things happen? Just because we are Christians and we believe in God doesn't mean that bad things won't happen to us. What it means for us is that when we are dealing with hard times in life, we can lean on God for his strength to get through it. It's maybe easy for you to say how you should act, but when you are living out situations, it can be very different. You might question why God let it happen to you in the first place. You might feel anger towards God for not stopping it from happening. Or maybe you will find some comfort in the passages in the Bible and know that God is beside you while you are in this pain. You may have heard the phrase, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away before. What do you think this phrase means? As Christians, we believe and have the understanding that everything has been created by God. That is everything we see around us, our ability to think and understand, along with all of our feelings. From the book of Genesis, we know that we are essentially caretakers of God's created world as he created us to rule over and take care of it. In this passage, Job knows that he came into the world with nothing and that everything he has has been given to him by God. Do you really think, though, that God takes things away from us? We know from this story of Job that it was actually Satan who created all of Job's sorrow and misfortune and not God. But Job doesn't know this. 
But what we do learn from the story of Job, though, is that even through all these hard times, Job never stopped trusting and loving God. At times we might find this incredibly difficult and maybe even turn away from God, but God will always be waiting for us to return when we are ready. Even when we have disagreements with friends and family, we don't stop loving them. And it's the same with God. How do you think Job's story compares to Gordon's? Well, in both stories, the main character lost everything that they had dreamt about. In Gordon's case, it was his future career and everything that he loved about it. And in the case of Job, he lost his wealth, his fortune and his family. In both cases, they were able to overcome the challenges and start a new path for their life. It wasn't how they planned or hoped, but they were able to adjust and enjoy their new life. We're coming to the end of this session and I really hope that you found the time and space with God valuable for your own thoughts. Now I'm going to close in prayer. Please continue in your own thoughts of prayer once I am finished. Heavenly God, we thank you so much that we have the teachings of the Bibles. We know that we will not avoid pain and sorrow just because we are Christians and we believe in you and have you beside us. But God, help us to remember that we can lean on your strength when we have none. When we are feeling at our lowest, we can turn to you for love and comfort. God, we ask that you are always beside us and we never forget that. Amen.